God bless you, our Destiny Worship Center family, to TNT. It is Tuesday night teaching, and uh, your pastor has a word for you as we are going through this season and this time. We want you to like this slide. We want you all to share it with your family. Y'all can't, I can't see y'all, but y'all can see me, but I want to talk to all of my family tonight. So make sure that you like it. Make sure you share it. In the meantime, get your Bibles. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. Dust off your Bible, blow your Bible off. I know you got your Bible on your phones, but let's go on and study the Word together. In the meantime, if you're blessed, I want you to weigh in, Destiny Worship Center family. Say, hey, Pastor, I'm blessed. Here we go. Y'all know it. Everybody say, bless, 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 bless. bless. Everybody say, bless, bless. Bless, 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 bless. We bless, we bless, we bless. Oh, we bless in the sea. We bless, we bless. Oh, we bless when we come and when we go. We bless down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty for the devil is. We are. We bless. We're blessed. We're blessed yes, we are. When we go, we cast down. Sickness and poverty must cease for the devil. One more time. We're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed. We're blessed. Yes, we are. We stronghold the devil is sickness and poverty mercy for the devil is Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Sarah, Danita, Tanya, come on. Say late. Late, late in, in the midnight hour, hour. God. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. You got to know it tonight. Say late. Late in the midnight hour, God. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Oh. One more time, say late. late in the midnight oh, God. God gonna it's going to work. It's going to work in your favor. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. God's going to turn it around. And around. And around. And around. And around. And around. He's going to turn it all around. He's going to turn this season. Your trouble. Your home. So late, late, late in the midnight, midnight hour, God, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Oh, one last time, everybody late. Late in the midnight hour, God, God's gonna turn it around. And around, and around, and around, and around. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. bless. Blessed, everybody say bless, bless, bless. Yes, I am blessed. Bless. We bless, we bless, we bless. Everybody, we bless in the city. We bless. We bless in the field. We bless. We bless in the cloud. We cast down every Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is we're blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed, we're blessed when we go, we cast down sickness and poverty for the devil, we are blessed, we are blessed. Praise the Lord, God bless you. Get your Bibles, turn them into the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 2.
Second Corinthians chapter number two. Thank you, singers. Oh, 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 oh. Second Corinthians chapter number two. Second Corinthians chapter number two. I wanted to invite you to be with me uh, this Friday night. This Friday night. Yep, I want y'all to be with me this Friday night. Uh, I've got an I've got an internet and an internet show that just started this past Friday called Real Talk with DeAndre Patterson Beyond the Four Walls. So we're dealing with frontline workers, healthcare workers, education people. Uh, we're dealing with students and parents that are dealing with the impact of this coronavirus. And I want y'all to be with us this Friday night. Last Friday night, it was healthcare workers. It was a great time. This Friday night is going to be for educators. And there are four educators that are going to be on. We want to talk about the impact that COVID-19 has had on our community. And uh, all of us have had some bad testimonies concerning this. You know, it's not been good for nobody. Absolutely nobody. It's not been good for the church. Not been good for businesses. It's not been good for our kids. Our children probably won't be graduating the customary graduation uh, that they that we're normally seeing. Uh, so we want to talk about some of those things. So we want y'all to be there watching us, and we want y'all to weigh in. That is this Friday night on DeAndre Patterson's Facebook page, and I believe it's going to be tagged to the Destiny page, Miracle Revival page, and my personality page. Second Corinthians chapter number two. Just going to talk to you just for a little bit. Not going to be long before you tonight, uh, but I want to continue staying in your face to get you through this period. Um, and I do believe the Lord is going to get some good out of this. Second Corinthians chapter number two, verse number two. Second Corinthians chapter two. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Ban. I appreciate you so very much. Verse number one reads as thus, but I determined this with myself that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you worry... Who is he then that maketh me glad, but the same which is made sorry by me? I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I more abundantly unto you. I have more abundantly unto you. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is the punishment which was afflicted, inflicted of many. That contrary, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. A few more verses. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love towards him. Listen to Paul's message. This is some conflict in the church because even though we're in this COVID-19 day, don't mean we don't have some conflict going on in our homes, in our churches, on our jobs. And so Paul's message to this church was, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love towards him. Don't charge him for it. Don't keep on talking about it. Let it alone. Confirm your love towards him. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ. A few more verses. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant concerning his devices. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was open unto me of the Lord. I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence to Macedonia. I want to preach from verse number 11, 10 and 11. That says, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. That if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant concerning his devices. I want to talk about Satan's tricks, Satan's tricks and strategies. Satan's tricks 
and strategies. Satan's tricks and strategies. All of us need to be enlightened about the schemes and the devices of the devil. Everybody needs to be enlightened of the schemes and the devices of the devil. It is very dangerous, hear me, to be ignorant of his strategies and methods for leading us astray. But the enemy's design, the Bible says, to kill, steal, and destroy. It's always something that the enemy is lurking, trying to do. In the book of Job, the Bible talks about, and I'm going to try to teach this today. Uh, the Bible talks about how God and the enemy was discussing what was going on. God said, what are you doing? He said, I'm seeking whom I may devour. And the Bible says that God speaks and says, have you considered my servant Job? And so the enemy's always the enemy of our hearts, the enemy of our homes, the enemy of our churches is always scheming to see who he can use to bring division, who he can use and what he can use to bring conflict and to bring all kind of havoc. Paul gives that very warning when he counsels the Corinthians to take care lest Satan should take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant concerning his devices. Many of these things we go through in church and it happens because of immaturity. And let's just talk just for a few minutes tonight. Some things that we go through, we go through not knowing that we're going through it. Some stuff that we do, we have accidents. You know, accidents happen. It's not something that you do on purpose. But when you are not mature, when you don't have enough experience underneath the wheel, I've got uh, uh, a fast car. Dylan is trying to learn how to drive. My wife is having him drive that fast car a little bit, but that car got a Hemi on it. And without him or him having enough experience with it, he can very easily, because of no experience, that car can get away from him. You know, it sound like old folk. That car gonna get away from you. Don't it sound like old folk? Any old folk watching? That car gonna get away from you. And so. Uh, many of these things we go through in church happens because of immaturity. And I'm finding out that a whole lot of folk that's been in the church a long time don't mean that you're mature. Everybody is not mature. Maturity does not come with age. It comes with experience. And some things we have to experience. Can I talk to you real quick? I might even preach a little bit of this too this Tuesday night. Some things only happen because you go through. Some revelations only happen because of stuff that you have to encounter. Some folk don't learn patience for others until they themselves got to go through some hell. Some folk don't get great revelation of God's grace until they're going through some things that they need grace from. That's why Jesus talks about uh, in the Beatitudes, the attitudes to be in. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Unfortunately, you don't have a whole lot of mercy for people today. People, people are more, more, more judgmental. They're more argumentative. You got argumentative people. You got judgmental people. But people normally don't get it until they got to go through some stuff. And so maturity comes. Come on, weigh in with me, Destiny, real quick. Maturity comes through experience. Experience. You, 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 you don't learn to pay your bills sometimes until you get a car repossessed. You, you, don't learn, you don't learn to pay your phone on time until your phone gets disconnected. So you've got to go through some experiences. Uh, David said that it was good. It was good. Some things is good for you to go through. And so uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 deals with a lesson of, 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 of strategies uh, that Satan uses to get advantage of us. Uh, beware, uh, being, be, be, uh, by being aware of these things, we will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's Ephesians 6 and 11. You've got to know the wiles of the devil. He wants us to put on the whole arm of God so that we can stand, not so we can fight, but so that we can stand. And in this day, can I preach to my family and talk to my family? We have to learn how to stand. We got to learn how to stand. We got to stand on truth. We got to stand on his word. Paul in Philippians gives us, Sister Tanya, uh, uh, Brother Marcus, he gives us uh, a way to think while we're going through challenges and, and, and spiritual warfare. He said, finally, brother, what sort of things are true, honest, lovely, just, be good report, be virtue, be praise. Seven things that he gives us to think about. 
And so if, if you're going to win against the strategies and the schemes of the devil, you got to have a certain mindset. You got to think a certain way. You got to think on the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is the word of God. Thy word is true. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. And where we sin in this COVID-19 day is not believing in God's ability to help us through because it's impossible to please God without faith. And so you got to know the strategies of the enemy. You got to know his strategies. In chapter number one, I believe it is, and if we can kind of just look at it real quick, Chapter number one or chapter number two, it deals with a problem in the church. And there's some unforgiveness. There's some, if, if, if this church was anything like any other church, it was probably some backbiting in it. It was probably some lying in it. There's probably a whole lot of stuff going on. And, and in this church, Paul did not want to see these people. He wanted to write a letter to him. He didn't want to go and visit them because he didn't want to make them feel any more worse than what they were already feeling. So kind of let's look at it. Carrying on through chapter number one, Paul defends himself against the Corinthian Christians. Some of them criticized him because he changed his travel plans and did not come when he planned on coming. So Paul was trying to get there, but he changed his plans. So he thought about it. He changed his strategy. And, and, and listen to this, and, and that's, that's a word that I'm probably going to be using for a little bit because I'm asking the Lord for some new strategies. You can win more by strategizing differently. You, you can't keep on getting the same thing, thinking that you're going to get it doing the same stuff. In order for you to achieve something different, you've got to do something different. And so Paul, he realized within himself that if I get to the Corinthians and I deal with this, they're going to feel bad. They're going to be going through changes. So Paul said, let me write a letter. You, you know what? It ain't what you say, it's how you say it. it, it it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You can do, you, you can do almost anything you want to do when you know how to do it. You can say anything you got to say when you know how to say it. You ain't always got to give a directive. You ain't always got to be bossy. You ain't always got to be, 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 be adversarial. Can I tell you, sometimes you can win by simply asking somebody the question instead of giving them the answer and let them answer their own question. Yeah, so you got to learn some new strategies. If you're going to win against the tricks of the enemy and you're trying to get points across, because that's where a whole lot of us get messed up, trying to get our point across. And Paul wanted to get his point across, but in order for him to do it, he had to write a letter. There you go. If, if you, uh, this, this, this would be just something for your family, for you. If you have problems in your home, write a letter. You got some problems with some of your children, write them a letter. You got a problem with your husband, your wife, write a letter. Don't always point out they're wrong. Stop pointing out everybody's wrong and start learning how to appre appreciate and praise people for the good that they do. You can get more flies from honey than you can get from vinegar. All right. And so Paul changed his plan. They use this as a plan or use this as a way of criticizing him, saying that Paul was unreliable and untrustworthy. We do not want to listen to him at all. That's what these people was really saying in their hearts and in their mind. Watch your attitude. Watch your attitude. Watch your attitude. Even in this time, watch your attitude. I said, Lord, there's a reason why we got to have this stay in order. There's a reason why. It ain't just to save us. It's not just to keep us, but can I tell you that there's some things that God wants to input in you. There's some things he wants to download into your spirit. He wants you to see yourself in this time. He don't want you to keep on seeing everybody else. There's some things that God wants you to see about yourself. And so God will use this, this stay at home time just to reveal ourselves to us. He says, he says that I would not come again to you in sorrow. Paul's most recent to visit uh, Corinthian was full of conflict and unpleasantness. Uh, listen, when, when he went to Corinth, it was unpleasant and it was full of conflict. You don't want to be around. If, if you want to make it through Satan's tricks and Satan's strategies, you cannot be around a whole lot of conflict and unpleasantness. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Pastors, churches, leaders, whoever you are to work in ministry, you get more done in ministry when you learn how to be pleasant 
when you learn how to talk nice, when you learn how to be sweet and be kind. How good, how pleasant, how profitable it is for us to dwell together when we're dwelling together in unity. And so we've got to be unified. We don't think the same way. We don't talk the same way, but we need to ask God to help us to know how to disagree. And Paul said that I wanted to come, but I had to change my plan because the last time I came, it was unpleasant and it was full of conflict. So he determined that he would not have another sorrowful visit with the Corinthians because of the different things that was going through. Uh, If I make you sorrowful, then who is he who makes me glad? Paul also knew that another painful visit would not be good for him and it wouldn't be good for them. Can I preach that to you real quick? If you go through enough hell at home, enough hell at church, enough hell in relationships, if it is better for you to write a letter than for you to go and see them people, so that it won't be more unpleasant for you and more unpleasant for them. Come on. Sometimes you got to be mindful and careful of your approach. Approach is everything. Come on. Weigh in. Weigh in. On this COVID-19, stay at home. We've got to learn how to approach things differently. If you want to, to, to defeat Satan's tricks and strategies, watch your approach. Come on, weigh in. I got to watch my approach. I got to watch, I've got to watch my approach. And not only do I have to watch my approach, I got to watch my responses. You got to watch re- approaches and you got to watch your responses. Uh, and so Paul, Paul said, and I wrote this very thing to you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow over those from whom I ought to have joy. And so Paul, look at this leadership. Look at this churches. Paul is saying that who I should be happy to come and see. I am sorrowful to have to write this letter. Because at this point, you all should be mature enough to be able to handle what's going on in your midst. But I don't have enough mature people. Paul said to the Galatians, he said that uh, uh, if a brother be overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual. That's not one that speaks in tongues good, but that's one that is mature. So you got to watch your approach to people who are overtaken. You got to watch your responses to people who have been overtaken. Ye which are mature restore such a one in the spirit of meekness consider yourself lest you also be tempted number one hear this real quick the devil distracts you with things that you need least the devil distracts you with things that you need least this is one of the devil's favorite ploys let them have their faith and cherish it in the in in some corner of their heart, but don't let them pay much attention to it. Keep them busy with worldly problems and pursuits. The enemy wants to put our minds on things that we need least. Here it is. In the day in the life of Martha illustrates this device. Martha was cumbered about with much serving when she ought to have been at Jesus' feet with her sister Mary. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. If y'all go read it, the Bible shows us real quickly how Martha had an attitude while Mary was serving Jesus. And and Martha looked at Jesus and said, you mean to tell me you're going to let Mary keep on doing what she's doing and she should be helping me? And Jesus said, no, mind your own business and what you need to be doing is what Mary is doing worshiping me can I tell you that you can defeat enemies and schemes if you simply get fixed on worshiping God worship worship he that worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth God is seeking for true worshipers when you really in worship you got less activity with the devil You've got to have your heart, your mind, your your whole spirit and body fixed on him, looking to the author and finisher of our faith, looking to the hills from which cometh our help. Jesus chided Martha for being ignorant of the devil's devices and for complaining about her sister instead of imitating her. I'd rather imitate Mary than to get tricked by a small device trying to compare myself to what Mary is doing. Martha, you got the wrong spirit. Martha, you got the wrong attitude. Martha, your attention is on the wrong stuff. Do you want to defeat the enemy this year? Get your attention off of trivial things. 
Put your attention on God's word. Put your attention on your purpose. What is your purpose in life? Whatever your purpose is in life, get your attention on that. Because when your attention is on him, you've got less time to have your attention on people. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Luke chapter 10, verse 38, 42. As people departed, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Watch this. Martha had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Come on. That's a good place to be. Come on, worshipers. Mary, Martha had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to her teaching. Martha, however, was distracted. Because she was very busy preparing food. Martha went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left all this work to me? Tell her to come back and help me. Jesus answered, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Really, only one thing is necessary. I bet somebody just weigh in. Only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen that good portion and it will not be taken away from her. Look at what Jesus said to Martha. Mary Mary chose the good portion, and I don't care what I do, I don't care what you do, I don't care what the world does, it can't be taken away from her. I don't care what you go through, you've got to have, Lord have mercy, that one necessary thing. Come on, the psalmist said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. And so Mary recognized what really mattered. Come on, way on in with me. I've got to recognize what really matters. Come on, praise team, church, family, elders, leaders, pastors, evangelists, recognize what really matters. Only thing that matters is that our focus and our attention is on God. You got to be mindful. The devil distracts you with things that you need least. Number two, the devil deprives you of things you want the most. The devil deprives us of things that we want the most. The devil can frustrate and discourage you by taking away things that mean a lot to you or hindering you from getting things that you'd really like to have. The devil is cruel in this device. Remember how he treated Job, taking away his family, his beloved family, his wealth, his farm, and his health. And we should not be ignorant of this device because the devil will throw it at us all the time in an effort to wear us down. The devil wants to wear the people of God down. If you faint during the day of adversity, your strength is small. Come on, look up in here, right here. Look here. Your strength is small if you cannot stand the test. Your strength is small if you got to continue being distracted by every little thing that happens. Your strength is small if you faint during the day of adversity. Come on, stand fast in the liberty where with Christ is made you free. Don't faint, Lord have mercy, during your day of adversity. A man's predicament at the pool of Siloam well illustrates this device. For years, the man had been waiting at the pool, longing to be healed. That's John 5, 2 through 9. Now at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, there is a pool. It is called Bethsaida in the Hebrew language. And this pool, there are five colonnades, five porches, in these lay a great multitude of sick folk, blind, halt, withered, and they're waiting for the troubling of the water. At a certain time, an angel would come down into the pool to trouble the water. After the stirring of the water, John 5, 2 through 5, whoever stepped in first would be made whole of that disease. There was one man at the pool that was trying to get in the pool for 38 years and Jesus noticed the sick man laying there and said do you want to be made whole and the man answered yes but every time I step in somebody steps in before me stop complaining stop making excuses come on you've got to stop making excuses that's another trick that's another scheme he wants to put excuses and alibis in you coming out of your mouth it's not what goeth into 
into the man that defileth the man. It's what cometh out of the man. You've got to stop giving excuses to all of your setbacks. Stop giving excuses to all of your pitfalls. Come on. Stop giving excuses to all the stuff you got to go through. If you're going to live godly, you're going to suffer. Lord have mercy. But if you suffer, you're going to reign with him. Don't give excuses. That is a scheme. That is a device. And we are not ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. Come on, come on. Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? I've got to ask you a question tonight. Do you want it? Come on, there you go. Do you want it? Come on, what do you want from God? Whatever you want from him, you can have it. You have not because you ask not. Now look, look, now look at what Jesus did. And I didn't see this until a little bit earlier. The Bible says that Jesus asked the man, do you wish to be made well? The man said, sir, I don't have nobody to put me in the water, but every time I try to get myself in, another steps down before me. Jesus said unto the man, he looked like, it, it, it almost even looks like he even had a little attitude, you know, because you got water in front of you, and you can easily crawl to the water. You can easily, you know, roll to the water since you can't walk. He said, get up and walk. Take up your bed and walk. Everybody else that got wet, and got healed he got healed just by being obedient can i preach to you real quick to tell you tonight that if you want to 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 embarrass the enemy if you want to win over the schemes and the test and the traps of the devil you've got to obey what he says obedience is better than sacrifice it was the man's obedience jesus said rise take up your bed and walk Lord have mercy. But not only did Jesus say that, but you see mercy stepping forth. Because Jesus was the one that asked him, do you want to be made whole? And Jesus was the one that stepped up and healed him. And so you can get your deliverance immediately. The Bible says in verse number 9, the man was made whole and he picked up his bed and he walked. So number one, you've got to know that the enemy wants to distract you with things that you need least the devil deprives you of things that you want the most and the devil distresses you with problems that you handle worse the devil and i'm done the enemy wants to distress you with what you know you can't handle on your own. He wants to mess with your mind on every trap, every test that you know you flunk. Uh, when I was in school, I, I, I didn't have no big problem with math, but I didn't try to go too far with it because I didn't want to try to learn trick, trick, trick. What is it? Yeah, there you go. Trigonometry I, uh -huh, and geometry. I'm going to tell you, I was going through so many changes. And then when it's time for those tests, I would get depressed. Woo, I get sick, sick to my stomach. I got fever, felt like I had corona when I was in school. I mean, I was going through a whole lot of stuff. And the enemy started to distress me. Are you watching? With stuff that I did not handle good. I want to preach to you and I'm done. Don't be ignorant concerning the devices today. The devil ain't messing with you where you're strong at. He's messing with you where you know you can't do good in. That's what the enemy really wants to mess with us in, where we are not good. If you can't write in cursive, that's where you get messed up. Did you know the schools are not teaching kids how to write in cursive? I didn't know that. I, I didn't get that. I don't understand it. So I had to ask my son, son, do you know how to write in cursive? He said a few things. He 15 going on 16. You need to learn how to write in a spirit in cursive. Come on. You, you, you got to know these. You got to know these things. He, uh, he, he got a few little issues with math. I said, son, you can overcome this. Yes, you can. You can overcome it. You got too many uncles and aunts. You got too many cousins that are good in this. And guess what? You going to be good in this. And you've got to start speaking into your children, speaking to your spouses. You got to speak to your pastors. You got to speak into your churches. I know you ain't been doing this. I know you ain't been doing that. But guess what you're getting ready to do? You get ready to overcome this. Hallelujah. You have the power to call those things that be not as though they were. We are not ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. The devil distresses you with problems that you have the worst. Satan puts on pressure in circumstances that you are least equipped to handle. 
It might be financial problems, quarrels, lack of sleep, or any of a hundred things where you don't function well. Do you know where you don't function well? Do you, come on Destiny, come on family, virtual members, do you know where you don't function well? Do you cuss a lot? Do you, you, you got to gas, you got to have some weed. You, 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 it's legal now. So you're trying to find you any places you can get you some edibles and stuff. Where do you not function? Well, the folk, you, the folk, the folk don't respect you and you go off on them. Come on. You got a short fuse. You got a gun in your purse or your pocket. Come on. You like going upside folks head. Come on. You a firecracker. Where do you need the most help? And wherever you need the most help is where the enemy is going to attack you the worst. Come on. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 22, Luke 22, Luke 22. I think I got some help back in the back. I got some help. Luke 22, 31. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, watch this. Behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. This is New International Version. But I have prayed for you that your faith don't fail when you have turned again strengthen your brothers Jesus said unto uh, Peter said to Jesus Lord with you I am ready to go both to prison and to death and Jesus said Peter I'm telling you now come on and, and, and the devil did not attack not another one of them people Jesus had already predicted that one of them would betray him and Jesus said I'm telling you Peter that the rooster will crow today but not before you have three times denied that you even know me the enemy is coming after where your weaknesses are and now it's time for you to build up yourself Hallelujah. Don't be ignorant concerning the devices of the devil. He is tricky. He's sly. He's sinister. But thank God we've got power in him. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus speaks and says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You have power over the enemy. I want to just tell you, you got a PhD in this thing. Don't allow nothing. I don't care what you go through. And then to conclude it, Paul said in chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, he said, we're not ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. No, we're not. We're not ignorant. He said, he said, lest Satan should get advantage of us. In other words, I want you to forgive that one and confirm your love for him. Don't let division land in your spirit. Don't let it land in your heart. Come on. You forgive him. Confirm your love for him. Don't treat him like he's an outcast. That is one of the devices and the schemes of the enemy. Tonight, for these next couple of moments, I want to pray God's prayer and the prayer of faith over you. That every one of you that's dealing with any kind of scheme, you've fallen into any kind of trap of the enemy. That no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. You might be tricked. Lord have mercy. You might even feel like you've been caught into a trap. But can I tell you that God has given you the power to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands out to these people that are watching tonight however few or however many are watching I pray God that you would cause this crew to grow past all of the devices give us proof and evidence give us proof and evidence come on way in family I want proof and evidence I need proof and evidence um, in myself help me to see that I myself am maturing I'm growing I'm learning a new approach I'm learning a new response I'm learning that forgiveness is easy it's a matter of the heart I'm learning that bitterness is a choice it's a matter of of the heart but I'm also learning that I should not be ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy give me power over my own mind give me power over my hands give me power over my own emotions in the name of Jesus and help me not be hoodwinked help me not be bewitched help me not be tied to traps and schemes of the enemy I thank you tonight father that as we have taught on this night of teaching father I pray God that your people will come up with evidence Lord have mercy your word said for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory the evidence that shall be revealed in us we want to see evidence this year in this COVID-19 
15. We want to say we're strong. We want to see you. We want to see beyond this. We don't want to be hoodwinked. We don't want to be handcuffed nor imprisoned by no trap and no trick. I thank you for bringing deliverance to my family, whoever it is. God, I thank you that you're still able. We pray for Mother Street today. We pray, God, that you would touch her body in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you would give her the will to fight again. We pray that you would give her the will to pray again. We pray that you would give her the will to live. God, in the name of Jesus, she's had to deal with corona, and now she's dealing with pneumonia. God, just a few months ago, she had to deal with the death of her son. But, God, I pray that you would re get, bring vengeance God on the person that did this. In the name of Jesus, you handle it while the mother lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, God, that you would give her the peace that you are handling it as she lives. And we decree and we declare in the name of Jesus, Father, that life would come back to her mind. Life would come back to her spirit. That life would come back to her body. In the name of Jesus, we're binding the reoccurrence of corona. We're coming against new pneumonia we got we pray that her lungs would be cleared of the pneumonia and the sickness and any other virus in the name of Jesus God, we praying tonight for school teachers. We praying, God, for principals and administration. We praying, oh God, tonight, oh God, that you would touch and that you would comfort those that have been working with students throughout the days, throughout the weeks, throughout the months. And now, God, they don't know which way to turn. But God, you're able to give us wisdom. That is another trick, another trap of the enemy. God, we thank you that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Give these teachers and principals administration give them wisdom give our, our our mayor wisdom father in the name of Jesus give our superintendent of schools wisdom in the name of the Lord God Almighty I thank you right now not God pray for the policemen we praying oh God for our our firemen God in Jesus name you're still able to subdue father you're able to sustain us father you're able to pick us up now do it for your glory in the name that's above every name we decree healing we decree deliverance and God we are not ignorant concerning any of these devices we know that this sickness is a device of the enemy but God we thank you that as Jesus said to Mary and Martha that this sickness is not unto death father we speak healing over our city we speak healing over our churches we speak healing over our membership in the name of Jesus and God, for every church that's got members that are dealing with coronavirus, God, we speak healing over their bodies now. In the name of Jesus, let not another member die from this coronavirus. Let not another family member get sick from this coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, God, we decree healing over the bodies. Sickness is of the devil. We're binding every demon and devil, every affliction. We're not ignorant concerning the devices. We call sickness and affliction and infirmity out of the body. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we count it done in Jesus' matchless and mighty name. Come on, if you know that God is able, you know that God is a healer, you know that God is a deliverer. Hallelujah. Come on, bless God with us tonight. We're not ignorant. We're going to defeat the devil. You've got power over all the powers of the enemy. I pray that tonight that you got the word of the Lord. I want you all to be encouraged tonight and to continue fighting. I didn't feel like preaching. I wanted to, but I've been preaching a lot. But I wanted to give you some stuff that you can take with you and hold with you. Now go back and look at these. Share this. Come on, these are devices. This sickness is not of the Lord. And don't let nobody tell you that it is of God because it is not. Sickness is of the devil. The devil brings sickness. The devil brings affliction. The devil brings infirmity and adversity. God allowed it. Now let's find God in it. But we're not ignorant concerning his devices. But he's going to give us power over it. I want everybody tonight to get your gifts in your hand. I feel like y'all in the sanctuary. Get your phone in your hand. Come on, I want you to get your phone in your hand. I want you all to sow tonight by faith. I want to see how great our gifts can get to on a Tuesday night. You're doing good, but come on, let it rise up, destiny. Let it rise up. You have not, pastor, because you asked not. I'm asking my leaders. I'm asking my preachers. I'm asking my mothers. I'm asking my evangelists. I'm asking my membership. 
Come on, give. DWCgiving at gmail.com is our Zelle. Our cash app is Destiny W Center M I N. And our, no, our cash app is dollar sign Destiny Worship Center. And then our PayPal is Destiny W Center M I N. Give your tithe tonight, give your offering. Let's stand in faith believing. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you bless your people. I pray that you bless them some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Bless those that don't have to give but had a mind to give. Then on the next time it's time to give, they'll have it to give. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. I want you to give tonight. I want you to stand with Pastor. Let's get through this. We're going to get through it together. Let me tell you that as weary as you all are, these preachers and pastors are very, very weary trying to figure out how we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it together. We're going to stand together. We're going to trust together. And again, the message was to me too. We're not ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy, but God's going to get us through it. Amen? I love you all. Love is Destiny Worship Center, and I miss you very much. I see you all Sunday. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest rule the Bible with us henceforth now and forever. We all say amen. Give. Give. And I'll see you all Friday. Be blessed.